we've been in a series of uh, psalms, and, uh, and each week we read one or two of yours. And, uh, and by the way, I got pressure from the men's Bible study on Wednesday morning that I had to write one too, so you won't know which week is mine. Okay. But uh, it's in there too. It's in the pile. Um, and, and I don't know what the phenomenon is, but it seems like every week when I read somebody's psalm or Janet read the last week, uh, then when I go and ask the people how it felt to have their psalm read, they all go, oh, I wasn't here that week. <laughs> <laughs> so, I look around and see who's not here today. <laughs> That's the strangest phenomenon. It's the latest thing. So, we'll make them all go on to YouTube and watch the, the, you know, the video of the sermon. They get that. They make me hear their, uh, their song today. Okay, here's one uh, from y'all. Oh, dear God, my comforter all my life, I'm more grateful for you every day. There's never been a time in my memory that I did not know of you, but there have been many times I wondered where you were in my hard places, my life in the pits. I've tried to trust you even uh, when I didn't understand my painful times. Forgive me when I am lost in them. Forgive me that I lose it still in the hard places. You never change. You're always there to be my comfort. Praise to you for your amazing grace to me. My hope and trust in you is stronger than before, even when my heart is heavy. Because I know you will always be my comfort. I know that my Redeemer lives. So keep writing your Psalms. It can be, uh, you know, the first like, don't have to be like anybody else's, and give them to us, and uh, just keep going through the Psalm. Now, the Psalm that we're looking at today. Um, I specifically asked for this was not given to me by Jeremy or Shamrock or TV. This is one I went, it's Fourth of July weekend, this is the song for Fourth of July weekend. Because this is small trivia. Anyone hear about the Bible trivia? Any trivia? This song is the dead center of the Bible. Scholars have said that over and over. This is the this is the actual physical <coughs> center of the Bible. So I go, that is gotta be what we what we look at today. So it's Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Now it is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I'll praise the Lord all my life. I'll sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal people who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground, and on that very day their plans come to nothing. Happy is the one whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord as God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. The Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the, the foreigners, the aliens, and sustains the fatherless and the widow, the single parent families, and he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. So, Lord, we do praise you, and we ask that you would teach us from your word and draw us to you and, uh, and change us as your people. Transform us by your grace. That's our need today in Jesus' name. Amen. I love this psalm on 4th of July. This is the only time I ever read it. Well, maybe on an election day Sunday I might read it, too. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't get political, and... Uh, uh, my goal is that no one ever knows how I vote based on my sermons, but a, co a cup of coffee conversation and they might know. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, 
this psalm to me is uh, is so good because it it's the it's the center of the Bible and it calls us to praise God who is everlasting, who who has made all of us, who who is above creation, who's not limited by it, and then that wonderful warning: Do not put your trust in princes, in political figures, in uh, the rich and empowered and all those things. Don't do that. Don't put your trust in people. Now, we're a country that is known for, you know, following after different people that we like, right? In our world, we call them candidates, you know, if there's a that's going to be happening in a year or so. And, uh, but uh, God's particularly warning, don't put your trust in these leaders because um, they're just people. And what happens to people? I learned this from Billy Graham. We, I, I probably told you this a dozen times. Remember when he was given that Congressional Medal and he was brought to, to uh, the... DC and all the Congress people and the president, everybody was there a few years ago and they gave him this medal and he got up and he said, as I, as I was walking here, I saw these beautiful statues of all these figures and paintings of people who, who have made our country great and have changed our lives in so many ways. And what do they all have in common? They're dead. <laughs> They're all dead. And then he looked out and went, you will be too. And I will be too. That's what we all got in common. That, I tell you, is right out of Psalm 146. <laughs> Why do you not put your trust in people who want you to put their trust in them, who want you to help them with their plans, who help them with their goals and their achievements? Why do you not do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be dead. As will we. And, uh, and he said, on that very day, their plans come to nothing. Doesn't matter what their plans were, their dreams, their schemes that they asked you to get involved with and support and give money to and get the vote out and all that stuff. It doesn't matter. And I'm not talking about, you know, any particular party. This could be, this is so Republican, this is so Democrat, this is so Tea Party, this is so uh, Peace and Freedom Party, if you're old like me, you know, and, uh, you know, it's all of that. And those those funky independents, they're, they're in this too. You know, they've got their own people. And uh, it doesn't matter. Why? Because they're all going to die. That's what this is saying. Don't put your trust to them. So I looked at this and I thought, well, you know, it does specifically say princes. Why would that be? And then I thought, you know, who, who wrote the Psalms, according to historians? King David. He didn't say, don't put your trust in the king. <laughs> Don't put your trust in the princes. Why? Well, you know, if you, if you follow the story through Scripture, a uh, couple, uh, couple of princes, uh, one died right after childbirth, right? Uh, the one where he had the affair. And, um, but there was Absalom, who was to inherit the throne, and he was a radical. He, he, he didn't like what was happening. He thought his dad had lost his way. He thought things needed to be fixed there. And we got to get back to our roots and we got to get back to what's right. And we've got to get firm with the law and we've got to do all of these things. And so he figured the best thing to do is to kill my dad, assassinate the king, and then get his gang of people together and we'll take over the country and I'll be king. That's the prince, right? That's the prince. And David's saying, don't put your trust in the prince. You know, I love him, but don't put your trust in him. And of course, what happened to Absalom? He's on his way to assassinate his father, King David, and he dies himself. And David grieves. He lost his son. But don't put your trust in the prince. No matter how passionate they are, no matter how radical, no matter how they're going to take this country back, no matter what they do, don't, don't put your trust in them. And then there was Solomon who just wanted to go his own way. He wasn't going to be the inheritor of anything. He was going along fine. And uh, David's dream when he was a prince was, I'm going, to bring, I'm going to bring the country together. I'm going to bring the divided kingdoms together. And I'm going to build the, the temple to God. And as his life went on, God said to him, no, you're not because you're a murderer and you're an adulterer and you're a liar and you're a crappy father and all of this stuff. And uh, even your kids want to kill you. And uh, you're not building the temple. Right. 
So Solomon, the prince, doesn't even get to do his own dream. He has to do his dad's old dream. He has to build the temple when he gets to be king. Because the other prince died trying to kill dad. What a family. My goodness, it sounds just like the West Falls. This is like, this is so real. It gets to me, you know. And uh, so you're looking at that scenario. It says, don't trust me. Don't put your trust in people. And, I, and this isn't just a political thing. Please don't think it's political because, you know, I, I had an experience today, okay? And, and we all have people that we go to for wisdom and all those things. I decided uh, Thursday night at 1130, I got this tremendous bout of vertigo. Room spinning, you know, walking to the bathroom, holding on to things, you know. Uh, I couldn't roll over in bed without flipping out and, uh, and uh, woke up Friday morning. It was just as bad. And uh, uh, didn't know what to do. And uh, Saturday morning, just as bad. And I thought, I can't, I can't drive into church to work on a sermon. Because the, ro- the world starts spinning. I'll veer into some gas station without knowing it, you know. And uh, so I did what, what we should do, you know. I, I went to experts. I went on Facebook. <laughs> and I wrote my problem down and sent it out to my friends. 1,031 friends all got my uh, plea for help. I asked for their wisdom. And guess what? Tons of them wrote their advice. Stop taking your blood pressure medicine. That's what's causing it. Well, then I go in and Dave, the pharmacist, says, you go home and you get your blood pressure medicine right now. (laughs) Whoever told you that was stupid. (laughs) But I trusted them. You know, and everybody else said, well, this is going to be terrible. You know, it's going to result in, you know, you're going to be deaf and you're going to be dumb and you're going to, you're already halfway there. And, you know, and uh, all of these, I had answered, somebody sending me high vibrations from San Diego. Whatever the heck that is. <laughs> but I said thank you. <laughs> That's really helping me now. Anyway, so there are all these things and next time. So I realized when I got to the end of all this, do not oh oh okay, there were a couple of people who did say, Why are you trying to get medical treatment from Facebook? Go to a doctor. Well, okay, there is that. All right. <laughs> and of course, Mark Weber, he was genius, you know. Stop watching Vertigo and start watching the birds. <laughs> if you're having trouble with Vertigo, just watch the birds. It's better, you know. <laughs> genius. <laughs> that helped as much as anyone. You know, so. But the funny thing is, why is it that we would listen to anybody? Why uh, experts, not experts? People in our life, Facebook, friends, you know, because we think somebody ought to know more than us and we ought to be able to trust them. Now, what's one of the pivotal lessons that we've learned here at at Harbor Church? Never trust people. (laughs) Love people and trust people. You got one word out of the whole thing, but you got the right one. (laughs) Yes, we trust God and we love people. We don't turn it around and trust people and try and love God more. That's crazy. The Bible never says that, but we do put our trust in the God who is our help and our hope, it says. Our help and our hope. God, God is both of those things. He's the maker of heaven and earth to see everything in it. The Lord, what's it say? Who remains faithful forever. That's where we put our trust. Not in political figures, not in so-called experts, not in Facebook. Uh, And then, I I love this because this is why I love this on 4th of July. Because everybody's a patriot on 4th of July. Election day, you know, there's more patriot than others. But depending on on what side you're on. But... um, Fourth of July, everybody's a patriot. So I go, okay, so what is God's political agenda that every political party should be working for? This should unite every political party. Tea Party, Republicans, Democrats, Peace and Freedom, Independent, whatever it is, uh, Salacious Buddies in the Bar Party, uh, whatever it is, they all should be united in God's agenda. 
And so when we look at our political system, or we look at our candidates down the road, we just say, how do they line up on these things, these 10 things? Where are they on these 10 things? And, and, and we know God's heart then. So what are the 10 things? The Lord remains faithful forever. So the faithfulness of God. He upholds the cause of the oppressed. That's number two. He gives food to the hungry. That's three. The Lord sets the prisoners free. Now, when I was in California and we read the scripture, it was the Lord gives a three-strike rule to felons so that, you know, we, we had our own translation of the Hebrew. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down or bowed down. When their life just bends them over from the weight of it, the Lord lifts them up. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien, the foreigners, the undocumented workers, and sustains the single parent families, the fatherless, the widows. He frustrates the ways of the wicked. Those are the things. It was funny, I was looking at this, uh, this week at uh, a little small group on Tuesday at Starbucks, and uh, one of our uh, one of our friends was there, uh, Juan Espinosa, who's helping the kids right now in the Sunday school. And he and his wife, Christina, was telling them they went to this uh, a banquet last week, and a beautiful banquet, and uh, it was a fundraiser for some missions things, and there were all kinds of important Christian people there, and uh, they were there, and, uh, and they were talking, and a, and a very prominent couple across from them mentioned that they just come back up from Phoenix, because they live in Phoenix during the winter, they come here during the summer, and and so they're talking about Phoenix. And, and Juan and Chris said, you know, we used to live in Phoenix. And, uh, you know, we loved it, but we've been here for a long time. Has anything changed? What's, what's Phoenix like now? And they said, oh, you know, there's, the highways are so, they're just gridlocked. They're just stopped day and night. You can't travel anywhere. The ring road around the city and anywhere you want to go, you can't, you can't drive anywhere. The traffic is so bad. They said, oh. Why, why would that be? What's, what's causing that? It's the drunk Mexicans rolling their cars. I want thought for a minute and said, I'm sure there were a few drunk white people who rolled their cars. <laughs> There's got to be a few. It's the drunk Mexicans rolling their cars. And somebody at our table said, well, maybe they didn't realize you were Mexican. My name is Juan Espinosa. <laughs> and this is my face. You know, what do they not know? <laughs> so I asked him, is it all right to tell that story today? And he said, uh, of course, it wasn't me who was stupid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> tell the story. <laughs> but you, know, you think about that God's agenda is watching out for, protecting, caring for the undocumented workers. Sustaining the fatherless and the widow, the single parent families who are the new orphans and widows of our day. You know, taking care of people, coming alongside them, feeding the, the hungry, watching out for people. Upholding the cause of the oppressed, where's the justice? See, what we do is we say, okay, this is God's agenda for us as his people. And, and, and I believe for our land. These are the 10 priorities. So, when you vote, if you vote, I, don't, I hope you do, whoever you vote for, make sure that these 10 items are top on their agenda. You know? And, uh, and they'll let you down anyway. So, you know, even if they do say this is on their agenda, they will let you down. So I'm not, you know, I'm not pretending that it's different than that. But then it ends up with, what does God do? He frustrates the ways of the wicked. Frustrated. I looked up that word because I'm frustrated. A lot I thought maybe I could identify with it. What it means is he bends the way of the wicked so that their way is crooked. It's not a straight path. And then I started thinking. We have all these phrases. Oh, those crooked politicians. Those crooked business people. Oh, those pastors. They're crooks. You know, we, we, that's a phrase that we've got all through our language, isn't it? Describing people of power who are really wicked, right? 
It's right out of Psalm 146. He makes crooked the ways of the wicked. So what can we do? What can we do? You should ask that question. In fact, you should. What can we do? One more time. What can we do? Thank you. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I am so glad you asked. Here's what we do. We trust God and we love people. We trust God and we love people and we claim in praise the Lord reigns forever. It's the Lord who reigns forever. It's not us. It's not those people. It's not anybody else out there. It's the Lord who reigns forever. And what we can do is find our hope and our healing and our help in the Lord. And the Lord's priorities become our priorities. And the Lord's vision becomes our vision. And the, the Lord's heart for, for the, the down and out become our heart for the down and out. And we're free. We become free. Do the others stop being crooked? Probably not. Right? Does everything work out really smoothly? Usually it doesn't. But who's in charge? It's not the princes. It's not the political leaders. It's not the religious leaders. It's not the educational leaders. It's not the health leaders. It's not any of that. It's the Lord. And that's where our, our hope and our help come. Now, Jesus said, and it could come right out of this psalm, come to me, all of you who are tired and overburdened. Come to me, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke on you, learn from me, because my yoke is easy, my burden's light. And I think that same invitation stands for us today on this 4th of July weekend. Jesus says, come to me. And if you're beat down and worn out and bowed over, come to me. And it changes everything. 